to another free YouTube tutorial video on financial modeling. This time around, we're going to be talking about a topic that is often overlooked, but is very important whenever you're using Excel and getting into financial models, which is how to color code your models. Now, if you look at this model summary for Walmart I have on screen here, we just have a summary of their income statement over two historical years and then five future years. You can see that everything here is black right now. And if you haven't done much financial modeling before, you might look at that and say, oh, well, who cares? I mean, if you open a spreadsheet on your own and try to enter data, everything is going to be black by default, black font color. So you might look at this and say, well, why does it really matter? What's the point of color coding things? And the point of color coding things, as I say over here on the side, is that you want to be able to tell at a glance what is a formula, what is a constant, what is text, and then what is a direct link to another workbook or another worksheet. Now, if you don't color code things like that in your models, it's going to be much harder to understand them, to follow them, and also to interpret other people's models. And then if anyone ever looks at your own work, it's going to be much harder for them to understand, meaning that you will have to spend more time personally explaining it to them. So in this model, for example, this 3.4% number right here, well, as you can see up here, this is actually a hard-coded constant. So we want to note that somehow. And then if you look at some of these formulas, so the revenue growth here, this formula, or just the revenue itself. These are clearly links to other worksheets, operating model H23 right here. So we wanna note that and be careful to show what we actually calculate via a formula versus what is a link versus what is, as was the case with the 3.4%, just a hard-coded number. Now, if you go down, you can see some more examples of what I mean. This operating margin right here, this would count as a formula because we're not referencing directly another worksheet in this. Instead, we're just dividing sell G11 by G8, so the operating income by the revenue to get the operating margin. So we want to color all of those differently. Now, the standards for doing this vary a little bit between different banks and different groups, but a rough guideline, I'll zoom in so you can see this a little bit better, is that generally you want to use blue for constants and hard coded numbers. You want to use black for formulas and text, although some people actually use blue for text as well. Use green for links to other worksheets. And then for input cells, so if you have something like the company's name or the tax rate or the fiscal year, something like that, then you often show those with a yellow background, a black border, and then blue text. So the blue up here is more for historical data that has been hard coded and entered for past years, whereas the one here is more for variables that you're going to enter and assumptions that you may actually conceivably change around in the model. Now, as I say here, over to the side, it does vary a little bit, especially this one for input cells. You'll see a lot of people who don't even do this necessarily, but the others are all pretty standard. Now, the definition of what exactly is a formula versus what is a direct link also varies a little bit between people. For example, some people will say that green should only be used if it's literally a direct link, literally an equal sign to a single cell, whereas other people say that even if it's a formula involving direct links, so if you have this one, L43 in operating model tab, plus something else there. Maybe you should also color code that green. We're going to stick with a stricter definition and say that it really green is only for direct links and it, you, you cannot use that with a formula. So how do you actually do this? How do you actually go about color coding this and making this correct? Well, the good news is that it's fairly simple to do at a basic level. If you just want to color code formulas and constants, for example, I'll show you right now. And you can see some of the shortcuts here for both PC and Mac. You'll also see these below the lesson video for your own reference. But what you can do is let's go in and highlight this whole area. You can press F5 on the PC or Mac and then Alt S or Command S on the Mac to go to special. And then you can just go to constants here, which you can get to by pressing the O key. And then if you want to deselect the text, you can press the X key right there. So what this does is it selects anything that is a hard-coded number, so just 3.4% in this case. And then on the PC, you can go to Alt-H-F-C and change the font color to blue or whatever you want it to be. We're going to change it to blue in that case. If you're on the Mac, Alt-H-F-C will not work, so you're going to have to go up to the ribbon manually and go in here and change the font color. Now to select formulas, what you do is press F5 and then go to Special, Alt-S, and then you can press F to go to formulas, X to deselect text. Now all the formulas get selected. And I didn't select a particular range that time, which is why you see everything on the page is now selected. Now, a lot of these are already black. So the real challenge with this model is not differentiating between the constants and the formulas, but instead differentiating between the formulas and then the direct links to other worksheets. 
So this one gets a bit trickier and more involved. And what you have to do, I'll zoom in so you can see this, is to detect a direct link to another worksheet, you have to look for the exclamation mark in Excel. And so what you could do is just go to find with control F or command F, and you could go through and look for exclamation points all over this worksheet. And that can work, but it's very time consuming. So a slightly better way to do it, you can see I have some instructions over here. A slightly better way to do this is to use some VBA code in Excel. Now, if you haven't seen VBA before, which stands for Visual Basic for Applications, you might be a little bit intimidated by this, but if you press Alt F11 in Excel, you can see my macro to color code cells appropriately. Now, I can't possibly explain VBA to you in this single lesson. However, we will list the code for this function below this video so you can apply it on your own. What I'm gonna do now is just briefly go through the basics of how this function works in Excel in the spot over here where I have the entire thing written out. And then once we finish that, I'm gonna show you how it works in action, some limitations and drawbacks, but also how it could be very useful. So up at the top, we're just declaring some variables, including the ranges that we're going to be selecting, the constant cells and then the formula cells, pretty much what the name says. And what we want to do here, this first part, really, this is just saying, hey, let's find all the constant cells and then let's find all the cells that have formulas. Because the constant cells, these are easy. We can just set these to blue, whereas the formula cells, we have to do some more work. We have to check if there is that exclamation mark. And if there is, we have to change it to green. If there isn't, and it really is just a formula, let's change it to black or keep it at black if it's already black. So we start with the easy part first, the constants. And down here, we check to see that there are actually constants. That's the if not constant cells is nothing. A little bit confusing to read, but basically we're just checking to make sure it contains at least something. So in other words, it's found some cells that have constants. And then we change the color index, the theme color, the tint and shade. Actually, we don't even need this one for the color index. That's redundant because we already changed the color down here. And then we go into the formula cells. And I have some notes here on what each line does. But once again, we check it, that it contains something. Then we loop through each of the cells that it found. We get the formula from each cell. That's what the cell.formula part over here does. And then what we do is first we check to see if it's actually a link to another workbook, another file. And we actually color code those red in this macro. Now, you don't have to do it like that. I've just chosen to here because we are strongly against including links to other files other spreadsheets, yes, but other files can create a lot of problems. So we actually color code them red to indicate that you should look at those cells. Now, this next part here, you might be looking at this and saying, okay, well, what does this do? Cell formula like exclamation mark and not like asterisk, not like plus, not like minus. So what exactly is all this doing? Well, essentially what we're doing here is checking for different operators and we want to make sure that it is really a direct link and that there's no formula in the cell. So first we check to make sure that there is a direct link somewhere, which is what the like and then asterisk exclamation mark asterisk here do. This is essentially saying, okay, anything can be before or after the exclamation mark. So if you have anything before or after it, that's okay. As long as there's an exclamation mark somewhere, this condition is true. And then we want to check that all of these other conditions are false. So we want to go through and say, okay, there is an exclamation mark, but there is no multiplication sign. There's no addition sign. There's no subtraction sign. And then you can keep going through this and look at it yourself. There's also no division sign. There's no percentage sign, there's no exponential or power sign, there's no greater than, less than, and so on and so forth. So we check to make sure that none of those are there, which is a rough proxy for whether or not it's actually a formula. It doesn't work 100%, but it works fairly well for our purposes. And then we change the font color, the tint and shade. This is really just changing it to the green color. So if you press Alt H F C, it's really just changing it to this color here. That is just how Excel records that color internally. And then if you go through this, you find all the direct links, the true direct links, and then everything else we set to black. So color index zero, that just refers to black. So that is basically how the function works. I realize, again, if you haven't seen VBA, it may be a little bit intimidating, but it can be very, very useful. And so I strongly recommend using this or even modifying it if you want to create your own version of this. So let's see this in action and see how this works now. So once again, I'm going to highlight everything here and Let's change this back to black just for fun so we can verify that this is working. And now let's press Control Shift C, which is the shortcut key to activate this macro. And look at this. So our formulas are in black. 
can see the operating margin formula right here in black. And then our total debt plus capital leases here, this is also actually a formula. If you look at it, press F2 or Control U to enter the cell. This is actually a formula involving additions from other worksheets. Whereas everything else in green, these are all direct links. So these are properly colored in the green color that we wanted. All the text, of course, we leave alone because that's how the function is set up. And this is all in black. Our constant is blue as we wanted. So that is how this works. And it's really pretty convenient to use. I find myself using this all the time. Control Shift C. You can see here, again, these are all formulas. So it's smart enough to know that we should not be color coding these green, even though there are references to other spreadsheets here. So very useful. It doesn't work 100% the way you want all the time. One limitation, for example, is if you have years up here at the top that are linked elsewhere as we do, well, this would qualify as a direct link as well. So if you press Control Shift C, Look at that, now this is green. So it doesn't work 100% the way you want all the time, but it can still be a very useful time-saving feature. It's just that you have to make sure you only activate it in certain regions as opposed to activating it for the entire spreadsheet. So that's a bit about how you can color code your own Excel models. Again, just to recap, you do this to make it easier to tell at a glance what each cell is, whether it's a hard-coded number, a formula, or a direct link to another worksheet. And if you don't do this, it's much harder to read and interpret your worksheets at a glance. At a basic level, you can use the F5 shortcut, go to special, and then jump to constants or formulas and color code them yourself. But if you want something a little more automated, you can use the macro that I went through with you. And you can see the code here. You'll also be able to see this right below the video. So very, very useful, very handy. It's not something that works 100% of the time, but it will still save you a lot of time as you're going through Excel and building your own financial models.